Children's Hour. Um, I, the uh, you were there, and Roseanne was there, and was that it? Me. I was. A what were you? AD. Uh -huh. Okay, I remember now. Uh, <laughs> and there was Myra and Stephanie. Yeah, but they aren't here, so it doesn't matter. And uh, so, of course, I, I was supposed to be Joe Cart, the doctor guy, who's uh, you know uh, supposed to be uh, Yager's fiance. Yeah. Seth Yeager's fiance. Yeah. Um, where is she now? Anyway, um, and I'm not. You know, I've always been this weight. I've been this weight since ever. Um, and so it was like we got we got to fatten Larry up. We got to fatten Larry up. We got to make him big, bulky. So she would uh, see on CB's, you know, dictum. Um, it was about we're going to give Larry uh, every time you see Larry, you're going to give him Oreo cookies. <laughs> Oreo cookies. Oreo cookies. And Is this so why you're diabetic? Well, it was, it was probably a little bit that because it was like in that month. <laughs> I was eating all these Oreo cookies. I was running to uh, Dunkin' Donuts in the middle of the night for chocolate donuts and hot cocoa and just eating and eating and eating all the sugar and then promptly throwing up. Uh, went home for Thanksgiving. My mother saw me. She said, oh my God, you look like death. Uh, I was, I'm normally about 140, 145 pounds. Uh, I was down to 115 at that point. Um, so my mother said, when, you know, when you get back to the, you know, uh, the whatever the plenty of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you, you know, check it out. So then they determined I was diabetic. Um, so then, of course, it was, everyone was so, felt so bad. Because <laughs> they were filling me with Oreo cookies. Uh, but I didn't, you know, I didn't say no. I didn't say no. Um... Um, so what's my point? Um, uh, CB was a very was a force of nature. Let us say that. Um, uh, whatever she wanted you to do, you tried to do it to um, not only to please her, but also because you knew that somewhere she was probably right uh, in what she thought about what was happening in the situation. Um, and I'm still doing, you know, I'm still, I'm still doing it, for God's sake. Um, so there you go. That's my story. Amen. 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 Oh, I killed the root, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> How do you follow that? I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> easily. Easily. We can do that. I don't know. Character studies or script analysis. It was about how to inspire people. She was a very gifted director, um, beautiful stage pictures, wonderful, wonderful artist. But the thing that I think she did best, certainly the thing that I am most grateful to her for, is how she seemed to have such an ability to motivate you to do even better than you thought you could. And every production that I did with her, there was a feeling of such camaraderie and such almost blood brothers mission to, to make this thing that we're doing as best as it possible, possibly can be. And I have never seen someone else match that. The thing that I will take away forever from her is her Manhattan recipe. And, uh, and that inspiration. And I also want to add that um, this coming Friday, um, I had occasion to call Carol to let her know that Ron had passed away that day. 25 years ago, next Friday. And Carol and Ron had had a bit of a falling out over some stuff at Central Station and all, but of course that was. Uh, that was a material they loved each other very, very much. And she asked me if he knew that, and I said, of course he did. And she said to me uh, on that day that in all of her teaching, in all of her career,
that the time and the place and the group that most often recurred to her, that she constantly would think about and come back to, was us. And so what do you mean by us? And she said, you, your group. My last few years at Wesley, it was a very incredible, special time, and I hope everyone carries that memory with them. And I don't see how any of us can. And it's awkward. I've never, ever lost someone who specified no services, so I don't want to like turn this into, any, into anything formal, but I would like to ask us to at least raise a glass. I think that she would do that. She would allow that. And uh, I'd like to offer to um, her sense of, of enthusiasm, her and her ability to inspire, because I think that was her greatest here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And she served them in those coconut shell glasses. Do you remember those? <coughs> glasses with that coconut. What was the bourbon of choice? I'm missing Major's part. No, not What I really take away, I mean, I have that personal connection, friendship, and all that, but. I'm thinking more like what I use every day as a teacher. And one of the things I use, she taught me, she has this eye for quality for a great script. And she's like, that's where it starts. So um, so when uh, I was a freshman, she didn't know who I was because we couldn't be on stage, but she was directing Delicate Balance. And I was just watching. I would come in and just watch her. She, in every minute, and she never threw anything away. There was never any unexamined moment in any script. You didn't take anything for granted. And then the next year, and this is what I, uh, I hadn't thought about this till now, but she kind of introduced me to Stephen Sondheim, and you know, I would follow this. And Roscoe was listening to the Rain on the Roof with yes. Anna, yeah. And just, just, and, and just, just that exposure, and, and, um, and then of course, did she did Equus. Yes. Yeah, yes. she directed Equus. That I was with her. Yeah. And she thought theater really mattered, that it could change the world, that it could, that was yes. important now, whatever it's going yeah. to do. She went through a lot to, to get to do it once they didn't want her to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially the nude scene. Which we did once in rehearsals. Yes. Uh, there are so many shows that, that people like me that were not in school when you guys were doing these shows. They transcend you. They, 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 I know all about all this stuff. I knew about Linda Sterling before I met Linda Sterling on Facebook. I knew you before I met you today. I mean, there's so many things that, these shows that she did that just are completely transcend time. I do tell people that I have seen my favorite Follies ever, and I've seen, was in, but seen my favorite Willie Loman ever in my favorite death of a salesman ever. And I've seen many productions since, you know? And they were, I don't think it's just because they were the first time I saw or was involved. But Dustin Hoffman's a slouch. <laughs> Compared to Casey. Now you got it. <laughs> you know what was so well, wonderful about Salesman was that, it, God knows it was a heavy play, but you didn't go for the heavy. No. You went for the laugh, for all those warm moments that made all those heavy moments just, they'd come out of the blue all of a sudden then. Casey, yeah. I still laugh at the walrus line. Yeah. I oh play it in my head and oh, it just makes time. me laugh all the time. I think of you. You are called me a walrus. The whole Stargate scene between you and Gary. Yeah. You know, I mean, all that stuff. It was just hilarious. What's the walrus scene? Well, he says, <laughs> do it, Casey, do it. What does he say? He says, uh, well, he said something about a walrus. He, uh, he, someone's insulting him. And he says, oh, you know, he, he, uh, oh, his old boss or something. Right, right. You know, some other salesman. Some, some, some other, other town. salesman, that's right. Says, yeah, says, uh, and, and, which, and then, the, and then, what was it? Oh, later in the year, it was like, we were doing the Scottish play or something, and you said, well, there's no parking, there's no parking, there's no wall. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Did you just say the Scottish play? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Because you have to 30 years later. <laughs> <laughs>
I think it's just because she taught us such a fine attention to detail. I mean, I, I think I was kind of a detailed person anyway, but everything in my life, I think, is just because how she taught us to watch every moment of everything we saw, and there had to be a reason for why it was done, or you just didn't do it. You know? um, I don't know. I mean, I, uh, you know, composition, form, balance on stage, you know, I know I carry that over in a lot of places in my life, but I can't be crazy for them, I'm sure. But I mean, I think that sums it up for me with, for her, it's just everything with detail. Every moment of every show, when I watch a movie or a play, I watch every detail of what they're doing and why. Ah, that's why. Oh, there's the meaning there. And, and one thing I think I always remember that she taught us is, what is the title? If there's a title of a play or a title of a This is the directing, the actual you directed what, a one act? Was that what we did? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, um, and I considered myself a directing major, so it was very important that I do that. And um, I had, I was doing The Lady of Larks for Lotion with Jane Ryan and Daryl Curie. And I had the, the, the beginning when the house opened with music that went right, in, and it flowed right into it. Well, as you know, in between each of those things, she would take copi she would write copious notes in between each one act. And so we opened the house, and the music started, and CB was still working. And I was like, well, too bad, just start the show. <laughs> so she, she walks in, she was, she was not terribly quiet when she came in, she sat down. And, um, and then when it ended, she was like, okay, I'm gonna have to see the first 10 minutes again, because you do that, why would you start the show? <laughs> uh, yes, why did I do that? <laughs> There's little and less, less excusable than a late curtain. That's what I said. I agree, Bill. <laughs>